All right, what's up, guys? Sorry for the much longer delay than planned. What happened was 10 minutes before the webinar was going to start, my mom called me and was like, I'm in town. Uh, I'll be there in 10 minutes. So I was like, well, what am I going to tell my mom? Like, I can't <laughs> go away because uh, i got to do a webinar. So anyway, here we are. Let's just jump into it. Um, we are going to be looking at how to use GIMP and another program called Snagit to do some image editing. And let's just get into how Steve says, tell my mom. Uh, he says hello. All right, let's go with the uh, screencast here. All right, so I'm going to fire up GIMP. Again, GIMP takes a little bit of time to load. I don't know why. Maybe it's just image editing programs. I used to use GIMP a lot more than I do now because, and you'll see when I when I get Snagit up here, that um, Snagit does a lot of awesome stuff automatically, where GIMP, you pretty much have to do everything manually. Oh, one thing I wanted to cover. Actually, I'm going to pull up... Um, a new window here. Let's go with. Um, I want to make. I want to show you how to make images for your social media profile. So, pick whatever social media profile you want, and you can look at the dimensions. So let's go to Twitter. Doesn't want to let me log in. All right, so here we are on Twitter. And if we go to my profile page, you can see that I have my logo up here. And, you know, to be honest, I don't use Twitter that much. I'm not sure if this is designing my own page. Anyway, what we're looking at, <laughs> what we're looking at here is this main logo at the top here, how you can design that. So what you're going to do is you just go to Google and you go uh, Twitter uh, profile picture size. Header photo is 1,500 by 500 pixels. And profile photo is 400 by 400 pixels. So to make that image in GIMP, here we have like a blank. We have nothing, no images here. Uh, we can go to File and New. I just hit Control N, and it's going to pull up the dimensions. We're going to go 1,500 by 500. And if you click this Advanced Options here, you can see um, the main ones you want to choose are going to be either white or transparency. Uh, maybe background color. That'll probably start off as white uh, because you can see here pre-selected. Oh, it might be black. But anyway, I always like to start with a transparency just because it's easier to work with if you want to make transparent parts of your image. And then, you know, you can proceed with... That's the wrong size. 500 by 500. Um, and you can proceed with uh, editing your image for your profile, however you want to do it. Uh, but actually, I don't want to create a Twitter image. So we're going to close that. Today, what I need to make is I actually need to make a new, uh, it's called a lower third for Google Plus Hangouts. So let's see, Google Hangouts lower that's the uh, logo part. You can see this guy here. The lower third part is this area right here. And you can have, they have some default ones, but you can create uh, your own custom ones. This guy went crazy. He has his own, like, a uh, bunch of brands over here. Uh, there's, like, some transparency stuff you can do with it. This is the standard one right here, it looks like.
Yeah, there's a bunch of different things you can do with that. So we need Google Home Hangouts lower third size. Six forty by three sixty seems a little small. Okay, optimal size for HD is twelve eighty by seven twenty. Looks like. Okay. One thing I've run into in particular with Google Hangout photos is, or lower thirds is that it does some odd resizing. And hopefully we don't run into that today. Where's my, okay. I want uh, 1280 by 720. And we definitely want it to be a transparency, otherwise, it's going to cover your face. And that's way too close. So I'm going to zoom in. How I zoom in is actually I hit the control button or command button, and I scroll the mouse up and down. I think you can, uh, let's see. I'm actually not sure how to zoom in and out <laughs> manually. So just hit the control button and then roll the mouse scroller up and down, and you can see it zooms in or out. OK, now for my lower third, I want to start with a box on the bottom. That's just going to be the easiest one to work with. So I'm going to select that area. And you know, to be honest, I'm not real professional at these uh, image editing things. So I just start with the most basic tools. Uh, I've got my box there that I'm going to fill it. Uh, let's say I want to choose a color. Um, all right, I think this is the green from my website. Uh, maybe not. Let's go to So this is a pretty awesome tool. It can just pick out all the colors from your website. I think that, oh, it even says how many times you used it. That looks pretty close. Um, let's see, how do I get this? Come on. Trying to get the color code from here. We've got uh, zero FC twenty five A. So go into GIMP zero FC twenty five A. There we go. And then now that the color is selected, I'm going to move it over into my color palette by clicking this arrow here. Hopefully that works. I don't want to do it. GIMP seems to have frozen, maybe. And it doesn't want to select that color. I'll just choose it manually. There we go. So now we have that selected. I'm going to fill that in. Now here's a cool thing I always like to do is I 
go to this gradient feature here. And if we go color erase in the mode, and gradient is going to be FG to transparent, what we can do is then click once and then drag to the other side. Oops, I went the opposite effect. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, essentially erase part of the color. It's going to do a fade into brightness. Then what I want to do is I'll type my name in there. Make sure the font that we uploaded last time. That looks kind of dumb. There we go. And then I can move it. I don't know if it's going to look better. That looks pretty good like that. And I might want to put my logo on here too. So what I'm going to do then, I'll go to File, Open. I've got to find my logo in here somewhere. So open that image, and I don't want to edit that this particular image. So I'm going to, because I just I always have a fear of saving stuff accidentally. Um, so I'm going to go Control New. I'm going to go Control C, Control V. I'm going to get out of this one. Then I'm going to resize this one. So to resize, I'll go to Image. Scale image, and I think I only want it to be about maybe let's start with 400 pixels wide. And I'll do control C. Control V. Whoops. Okay, so here's where we mess uh, get messed up with layers. Remember we got layers, so I want to go to uh, right click and we'll go to um, where's add layer new layer uh, it's transparency okay we're gonna put that on top we have that selected then we're gonna go to control V see how this is um, visible now uh, we're get, looks like we have to paste that down or we anchor layer Or maybe not. And paste that. It turns out I had the wrong thing selected. For some reason, GIMP has been choosing this little uh, curvy thing here. So I'm going to go to Move and make sure we're on the Move feature before we anchor that layer. So where do I want to put my logo? I don't want it to interfere with my face anywhere. Maybe we'll just put it in the corner here. That looks pretty good. 
I'm not exactly a design specialist here. And now we're going to anchor the layer or anchor that selection. And that's pretty much done. I mean, um, this is going to something simple for the for the uh, for the Google Hangouts. So you don't have to do a lot of stuff for it. So remember, I'm going to go do let's see, Control S. It's going to save it as the XCS uh, XCF format. So I'm going to go uh, a lower third version one. I'm going to save it in my pictures for now. So we can't actually use that. To use it, we have to go to File, Export. Make sure you leave it as a PNG so the transparency saves. Now, I'm going to open up my Google Hangouts here. Turn off screen share. And we'll try it out. Now, I know for this particular tutorial, it's a bit like, how do I take this stuff and apply it to my own images? The last tutorial was a bit more of generalized advice, like this is what this does, this is what that does. Uh, today, I just kind of wanted to show you a bit more insight into you know me creating my own image, the process that I go through and see what things come up. You know, we talk about transparencies, we, we talk about layers, talk about layers last week, sort of reiterating some layer stuff this week. Uh, int we introduced the gradient tool. Um, you can see how I find colors for my images. And also, that I, I kind of don't know what I'm doing some of the time, and I just kind of make it up as I go. And that's kind of what you have to get into. You have to figure out. One thing, uh, a question I get a lot of times, they're like, uh, people ask me, how do I learn WordPress? And the thing is, is I didn't sit down and learn WordPress. I was like, I want to do this. How do I do it? And then I would look it up. And I learned GIMP the exact same way. I'm like, I want to create a Twitter image, but I don't want to pay 15 bucks for someone to do it for me. How do I create my own Twitter image? Or I'd look on YouTube. Um, how do I fade colors? Or how do I draw a straight line? Or how do I cut out images? Uh, actually, I'll show you how to cut out images in just a second. Um, Oh, we did a lot of work in 10 minutes. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to try to upload that. I just got to find it here. Still working on it. I didn't realize my picture folder was so hard to find. Uh, what was it called? Here we go. And then we'll flip it around. There we go. There's my new lower third. That looks actually pretty good. A um, lot better than the other one that I had before. The other one that I had before was always covering my face. Uh, that green is not the exact green that I wanted, but it's pretty close. And I've got my logo up there. I've got my name up there. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I tried. I spent like two or three hours trying to create this before. And uh, it turned out pretty pretty bad. This is like the fifth iteration. So I think I'm going to keep this one. Um, I wonder if there's a save feature on there. I'll figure it out later. Anyway, there, you know, there's how to create a lower third. If you want to create a Twitter thing, you just do the 1,500 by 500 pixels, and then you can go through the same process. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you how to do.
So a lot of you guys are going to be working with products, and actually, yeah, Amazon is pretty good. They have pretty good product images, depending on the the product you're promoting. But sometimes affiliate programs you work with, they just don't have very good images. So what you can do is, if you're promoting it, um, you can create your own images. And I would definitely email them and ask them for permission, but most of the time they're like, oh, I don't really care. So uh, let's say I want to promote this uh, malic acid here, or malic acid, uh, which is some kind of brewing ingredient here. Uh, I can actually screenshot. Whoop, <laughs> actually, okay, that's getting ahead of myself. Let's go with a uh, right click and save image as. Go on. What's going on here? Uh, malic acid picture. Now, for me, I have to go to Show in Finder, but basically, you want to find the image file. You want to right click and open with. GIMP. So I'm going to close this down. Close this down too. OK, so what I have is this very boring image here. Um, and I want to make it look nicer. So I need to decide what size I want to make the image. So I'm going to go to Command New or Control New, decide on the image size. Maybe it's uh, you're doing a review post, and you want to make your standard image size is going to be uh, 250 by 250. So we're going to go 250 by 250. Okay, So this is automatically too big. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I want to select only the stuff I want. You might be dealing with like flowery or, or textured backgrounds. In which case, you're going to get this uh, rope tool here. And what you're going to have to do is so hold down the command or the control key, scroll your mouse, and zoom in. And you can always navigate with your mouse. We're going to click once, and then we're just going to do the painstaking process of that's actually not that bad. Depending on the image you're doing, we're going to go around the image and see. I don't have to click. If I click over here on this area, that might mess up. Um, I guess it won't. I guess you can scroll using this. Sometimes if you click in certain areas, it'll undo all of these little uh, dot points. So I try to click as little as possible. Again, I'm not a professional here. It's just how I do it. And you're going to click all the way around until you select the entire image. And then you can cut that out. And we'll um, talk about that in a second. Now, for this particular image, because there's a white background, all I have to do is click this fuzzy tool right here, which is fuzzy select. And it's going to select everything. It's, or it's just going to select this little bag right here. No, actually, I take that back. What that did, let me undo here. Show you. So when I click this, in the white space, what that's actually doing is selecting the white space. So what we want to do now, we don't want the white space. We want what's inside the white space. So we want to go to Select and Invert. Now we have the bag selected. So I'm going to go to con Command X. You can do Command C or Control C. And I'm going to, this is going to be too big, so I'm going to expand this area here. And then Control V, and you can see the outline of the image is way too big. So now what I'm going to do is go to Layer, and I'm going to Scale Layer. I know my image size, the boundaries are 250 by 250, so I want to make it a little bit smaller. I'll go 240, okay, and the height is 245, so that'll fit, and I'm going to scale it. So now you can see now it fits in there. Then I'm going to go to uh, right click here and anchor layer. And now we have a nice, even square image to work with. 
What I can do from there is I'm going to go to select all. I'm going to change this color to black. And then edit and stroke selection. And I want my pixel size. We'll go with three pixels. And now we have a nice framed image. So watch if we go to Control E for export framed image test. So when we look at that image, doesn't that look a lot better? I mean, maybe it's not as impressive. This is a picture of some brewing chemical, so it, it <laughs> might not look that great. But if you're inserting this into a post, you know, there's a huge difference between having some kind of like misshapen, blurry uh, photo that is, you know, resized and and doing all kinds of crazy stuff on your page that's messing up your review, versus uh, pre-cut, pre-selected, framed. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of um, universal throughout your site. You know, if every single review has a 250 by 250 image, it's just going to look um, more comprehensive across your entire site. It's going to look more professional. Now, that was a long process to just frame that one image, but once you get used to it, you can do it pretty fast. Okay, so we don't want that. OK, so basically, what I wanted to show you for that particular training was how to take an image from the internet uh, and to edit it to sizes that you want it to be edited, and then maybe make it look a bit, little bit nicer for your website. Some of these other tools in here, uh, there's a clone tool, which you can like copy parts of other images. That's more of like a Photoshop type thing where you want to um, do like, how do I describe it? Like make funny pictures or you want to uh, kind of uh, edit what's already in the image. All of the, the image editing stuff I've done so far is kind of practical stuff where we're making logos and we're making headers and we're making uh, images for reviews and stuff. The clone tool is going to be more for uh, like if you want to make a, a a nice sunset looking picture, you want to you know fix somebody's red eye or something like that. And the rest of the stuff I don't really use. The color picker can uh, pick colors from images. So if you see like I want to repeat that color, you can use that to grab colors. And pretty much everything else I've talked about. Okay, we're gonna close up GIMP because some of the other stuff is kind of. Uh, advanced and we're going to look at Snagit now. Now Snagit is a tool that I really really enjoy. If you've ever seen any of my webinars, you always see this little bubble on the side here. And that's because I have Snagit running in the background all the time. That's what this little logo is down here. Now what Snagit is, Snagit is a tool from TechSmith. And it's not free. Let's see how much it is. I think it was 50 bucks last time. OK, yeah, it's 50 bucks. Uh, it's basically the tool, one of the tools that I use every single day. And it makes my life so much easier. Basically, if you are taking any kind of screenshots, or even if you're not taking screenshots and you just want to edit images, it's got all this pre-selected stuff that you can mess with. So let's say I want to take this image off of the Snagit website. Not that I'm encouraging people to steal images, but if you're taking screenshots, I just want to show you. Let's say I'm doing a Snagit review, and I want this section here. I'm going <laughs> to let me redo that. And it's just so natural now. I don't even think about it. I'm going to click this uh, little camera here. I hover over it, and it appears. I'm going to click it. There's also keyboard shortcuts, but then we're going to click once and drag to the size that we want. And then release, and it'll be in there. OK, 
Okay, so now let's say I want to point something out in an image, and you see these in a lot of my reviews. I'm gonna click the arrow button, and it's got all these pre-selected arrows that you can customize with sizes and colors. And I want to point to this image right here. I just click once, drag to the location that I want. You can see it go all the way around. I'm gonna click and point to here. Now let's say I do that, and I'm like, oh, you know, I want to resize the image. So I'll go Control Shift R, and I will resize it to 500 pixels wide. Okay, and now I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, this arrow is too skinny. Okay, I can change the line width here. Let me make it a big old fat arrow. Okay, and now I want to make it like I'm covering some stuff. So now I want to make it a little bit see-through. And now, actually, I decided I don't like the style of arrow. I want to make it more pointy, or whatever you want to call that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you can basically make all those customizations on the fly, and it's still movable. I can still move it, and change it, and whatnot. Um, the other thing I use more, is, or I use a lot, is cutting stuff out. So let's say I want to cut out this search TechSmith bit right here. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to choose this Select tool here. I'm going to select this area. Control X, cut that out. And now what I want to do, that's transparent and that's white, so I want to make that match. I'll go to my Fill tool, fill that in. And then let's see, I'll repeat that over here. X. Uh, now I need to match this color. So we're going to go to Colors, Other. I'm going to get my color picker here. Select this color. Now that's on my palette. Close this. Fill that in. Zoom out. Look at that. It's like it never even existed. Um, I think that's a pretty cool, pretty easy way to edit your images to make them look like how you want. Uh, let's say this is part of my, there's some sort of information here that I want to cover up. Like, let's say this is uh, these Apple logos. Let's pretend that's a key code. And I, I want to show you the screenshot, but I don't want to uh, show you what it is. I could erase it. Um, or maybe if I'm doing some kind of advertising, as a better example, let's say I'm doing some sort of advertising, and this is contains some really interesting information here, but you have to sign up to my email list to get it. So to convey to people that there's information there, and they can get access to it, I can then blur that out. Okay, so then you have those like, okay, you know, here's the secret to making money online, dot, 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 and you're like, well, to get the rest of the information, you got to sign up for the email list or whatever kind of uh, thing you want to do. It just makes it easy to blur just like that. Uh, I use this a lot for tutorials, this number thing. Let's show you how to do that or show you what that looks like. You can see this is what I use Snagit for here. I, I create these highlighting boxes. And there we go. OK, so that makes it easy to do tutorials where you can show people step by step. Uh, the highlighting tool is the other one I use a lot, where I want to highlight some text. And, and sh like uh, I want to take a screenshot of some text. So. You know, you're not supposed to, if you're promoting Amazon products, you're not supposed to screenshot their reviews. But if you are promoting something and you, you see a review somewhere else on the internet and you're like, I want to show people what this person said, you can screenshot that comment or that portion of text, and then you can use the highlighter, and you can just highlight the words you want to highlight. 
And a lot of these will just be applicable if you're doing stuff that involves a lot of screenshotting. You know, I do a lot of product reviews, uh, digital product reviews. So I screenshot little bits of information and I, I use it to demonstrate points. So that may be more applicable to what I'm doing. You know, if you're promoting, um, uh, let, uh, promoting some kind of product that involves a lot of um, stuff that you can find on the internet, uh, then you might be able to benefit from this a little bit more. If you're promoting physical products, it may not be as beneficial, depending on how you do the promotions. Uh, one thing uh, that I haven't even gotten into yet, okay, let's say I go to, let's go back to Amazon. Let's pick something more interesting. Okay, sweet almond mint, mint cleansing conditioner. Um, now that has a, let's pick something with a lame image. <laughs> How do we end up on malic acid again? Let's go with tents. Okay. I want to promote this Coleman tent, and that's a pretty boring picture there. Uh, let's say that's the only one they have. So I'm going to click on it. It's just with, with a white background. Like, it just doesn't look very interesting. Uh, I'm going to screenshot this. OK, now I want to put it on a square image. I'm going to go to Control New, create a 300 by 300 uh, pixel image on a transparency. OK. I'm going to do Control Shift R to resize, and we're going to go 300 pixels wide. Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. It does. It's been doing this stupid thing where it resizes the background, but um, okay, we're going to put that image in there, center it, go right, and flatten. Uh, I'm going to go to fill in. I want white. OK, so now we have a square image. Now what we can do is I can go to Effects, and then I can go to Shadow. And that's going to create a nice shadow effect. You can't really see it here. But let's save this, and I'll show you what that does. Actually, I don't need to demonstrate that. Uh, let me just show you my website. Oops. You can see the shadow effect. I did that on this uh, this image here. Start making money with Amazon. That kind of makes it pop out. And I did it with all these images on the side. See how they kind of pop out? They look like you can reach out and touch them versus this one, which is completely flat. This is a really nice way to create a kind of subtle um, professionalism to your site. I love using this for sidebar images. Now let's see. This X right here, this is a stamp. So you've got a few different stamps. This makes it really good for reviews. I just basically use the uh, the circle, the check mark, the X, and then occasionally this one. Uh, you may find this would be really nice if you want to, let's say, you want to create an image. You can write some text in there. Oh, text bubbles is another thing. Okay, you say Nathaniel is awesome, president of the USA. <laughs> it's a quote. He did say that. I heard him. Um, and then we can take one of these quote marks, quotation marks, and uh, to demonstrate that this is something that he actually said.
And there you go. Doesn't that look like a cool little quote there? I don't know. It's a little bit corny. You can maybe think of uh, <laughs> something a little bit more original than that, but I mean, it'll fit with your website. Um, text bubbles, you can see, let me show you one more time the home page. Uh, this is a text bubble I made here. So let's say, let's see. Um, Oh, that's a small photo. I don't know if I have any big pictures. All right, so that's a tiny photo, but let's just pretend that it's not blurry. So I want to make me say something. So instead of going through, you know, if you were using GIMP, you'd have to create all these images and shapes. All I can, all I have to do is pick one of these bubbles and put it on the screen, click it once and drag it. Then you can drag all the other uh, portions like this. Change the size. Then you click in the middle. There's your image with your bubble. Uh, I find that... <laughs> I don't use that as often, but it does come in handy. Uh, at least the text creation is really handy. Sometimes I use it for taking notes or for demonstrating something. Like I can uh, drag and drop that, and I can just put That just makes an uh, easy label for pictures or uh, adding some sort of like uh, something you want to convey to your audience. It doesn't have to be on a person. It can be on an inanimate object. Um, if we get rid of these, text bubbles. It's gotten out of the screen, so we want to highlight, put a font, and reduce that font size. And it, it comes uh, pre-made with a shadow on it, and you can take that shadow off and just make it flat, or you can put a shadow on there if it'll let me. There we go. Or you can uh, change the side of the shadow, make it pop out like that. And um, I think that's pretty much it. That's, uh, let's see, effects. Some other cool effects, uh, you can do torn edges. I do that a lot for screenshots to make it look like it came from a web page. You can do reflection stuff. So let's see how that, I actually don't use that that much. That might be more for, It might be more for images on transparent backgrounds. What was the picture where I saw that had that? Let me just show you. See how this image down here has that reflection bit? You can do that exact same effect, how it makes it look like it's sitting on top of something, like it's kind of 3D. You can do that with this reflection bit here. Um, I don't use these perspective color filters and fade tools that much, but those are kind of easy ways to uh, change how the image looks. So I can change the perspective here on this tent. If I expand this out a bit. That's kind of a cool effect. Uh, the ones I use most are the edges. Uh, border is nice. 
So let's say this is my image. And instead of going, you know how we did in GIMP, we did uh, select all, edit, stroke selection. You can just click border here, and it's going to create a border automatically. And then you can change the size. And that'll create borders really easily for your image. Same thing with shadow. You can change uh, how dark and how wide the shadow is. It usually looks a little bit better, more subtle. Like uh, on these images, I only used uh, th uh, three three pixel shadow, I think, two or three pixels. So, all right. So I didn't have uh, something in particular that I wanted to create with Snagit. I just kind of wanted to introduce it to you and show you that it was a very uh, useful tool if you do a lot of screenshotting or if you want to make uh, your images look a lot more professional on your website uh, with a little bit more ease than having to do with GIMP. Now, Snagit is more limited than GIMP. There's not as many features. There's not as many tools. And some of the automatic stuff is kind of uh, limited in what you can do. But for a, a basic user that is, wants to do some simple things like add shadows or add arrows or highlight text or uh, create speech bubbles, uh, Snagit is an awesome tool. It's the best tool out there that I, that I know of. Uh, it does cost 50 bucks, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to include an affiliate link in the description of this video. The thing with the affiliate link is, though, is that it's going to be an Amazon affiliate link. And uh, let's snag it. You can actually buy Snagit from Amazon. Uh, Snagit 12. I don't know why there's two different products here. I'll find you the correct one. I think this one might come with a disk. Um, I'm actually using Snagit 11, but it's not. So you might get more stuff with Snagit 12. Anyway, the point I wanted to make is that uh, if you do decide you want Snagit and you want to support my YouTube channel and the uh, the videos that I do, you can definitely buy through my uh, Amazon affiliate link, which I'll put in the description. If not, you can go directly to the TechSmith website and you can purchase from them. It's the it's the same price. You get the same kind of support. Uh, it's the exact same software. Uh, they currently do not have their own affiliate program, so I, I do have to sell it through Amazon. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to check real quick if there's any questions. I don't see any questions in the Hangout so far. If you do have any questions, just leave them in the Q&A area. I see a couple people are watching. There's a bit of a delay, so. Anyway, yeah, my mom got <laughs> not to, <laughs> I'll just. Uh, talk while I'm waiting to see if there's any questions. Uh, my mom got a new dog. She got a, it's called a Labradoodle. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. It's a cross between a Labrador and a Poodle. It's a pretty, I think it's kind of a weird looking dog. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if you've ever seen those, those type of dogs where their eyes look almost human. They've got furry faces, but they've got like little pink rings around their eyes. It's kind of creepy, creepy dog. I mean, it's cute. It's a puppy. Um, she does some kind of cute puppy stuff. She ran out <laughs> of a glass door, and uh, she couldn't figure out how the glass door works. She kept running in the glass door, and then when I would open the door, she would be scared because she thought that the open door was the glass, so she wouldn't go outside. And then, I don't know. Anyway, puppies are they're funny. All right, we're not getting any questions popping up here, so I assume everyone is... Uh, question list for the time being. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, there'll be no webinar next week because I'm going camping, uh, but there will be a webinar the week after that, which is the uh, the weekend of the 9th and the 10th. So I think it'll be the 9th, that I, I did, whatever the Saturday is. Thanks for watching, everybody. I um, hope you have a good weekend, and I'll see you later. Bye.